Back in 2011, the Game of Thrones appeared on the screen for the first time. The series was based on George R. R. Martin's book and immersed the viewer in a thrilling story in a richly detailed fantasy world. Complex characters, drama, and a plot full of surprises. That's why we love the Game of Thrones. The But it's not just the entertainment part that make it so good. The Game of Thrones can teach us a lot about people, society and the state. It can also be a good example for studying the fundamental philosophical writings. For example, one of the most influential works of Western philosophy, The Republic by Plato. How you can better understand Plato watching the Game of Thrones? And why Plato, surprisingly as it may be, would have been pleased with the ending of the series? Let's find out. And winter is coming. In the Republic, Plato distinguishes five forms of government. There is a proper, just form of government, which can be represented in the form of monarchy or aristocracy. Here, rule is by law, order and wisdom. Then there are four wrong forms of government. Democracy is the rule by honor and duty. Oligarchy is the rule by wealth. Democracy is the rule by liberty and equality. Tyranny is the rule by fear. We will examine these forms using the kingdoms of Westeros, which are ideal for this purpose. They are essentially city-states similar to ancient Greece. Before we start, we need to clarify a few things. We don't take into account nomadic peoples like the Dothraki and wildlings. They don't fit because they don't have enough elements of statehood. Also, we cannot determine the belonging of several houses because we simply don't know much about them. And also, there are no examples of democracy in this series. Maybe the decision about what's best for everyone should be left to... Well, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should give the dogs a vote as well. I'll ask my horse. So we will identify only four forms. At the very beginning, we are introduced to three key houses for the Game of Thrones. Let's begin with House Baratheon. King Robert is a perfect example of a democratic ruler. He loves hunting, campaigning, and tournaments. I've been sitting here for days! Start the damn joust before I piss myself! He has a passionate nature that is more suited to war rather than peace. There's a war coming, Ned. I don't know when, I don't know who we'll be fighting. But it's coming. He is far more interested in the amusements than in governing, which the small console does for him. His younger brother, Renly, is more of a monarchical type, but he too has an, an affinity for democracy. As for the older brother, Stannis, over the course of the series, we see his transformation. From a democratic ruler, the best commander in Westeros, to a mad tyrant. Protect us! For the night is dark and full of terrors! <laughs> How Stark is the perfect monarchy, they are brave, honest, living by the law and wise. An interesting detail that even Ned Stark's alien children are raised as his own. All of them raised as northerners, as Starks. There is interesting parallel to Plato in his idea of the ideal upbringing of the children when he talks about introducing the concept of the Mother Earth. The departure of the head of the house, Ned Stark, to King's Landing shatters the serenity. But even so, the children he raised always look up to him as the moral ideal. In winter we must protect ourselves, look after one another. Father. House Lannister is of course an oligarchy. Lannister always pays his debts. The Lannisters have a talent for finding solutions even in seemingly hopeless situations. Even when losing on the battlefield, they find ways to turn the tide at the expense of their wealth. According to Plato, oligarchies necessarily lead to a split into two states, the rich and the poor. 
and we see this literally in seasons 5 and 6, even though at times there are natures among the Lannisters that are closer to democracy or tyranny, still the oligarchic order is the mainstay of this house. The Lannisters attract people hungry for wealth and make them their allies, thereby developing the strength in the oligarchic form of government. House Arryn is presented as a tyranny that rules by fear of Heights. An important point that we do not see John Arryn, who was the head of the house, as the events of the series begin with his death. Many speak of him as an honest man who did his duty faithfully. John was a man of peace. He was hand for 17 years, 17 good years. From which we can assume that under him House Arryn would have been classified as either a monarchy or a democracy. But we can only judge from what we see. Tyranny. Another tyranny is House Greyjoy, at least at the time when it is in a stable state. After Balon Greyjoy's death, a struggle for the right to rule the Iron Islands begins, which continues until the end of the series, so we cannot speak with certainty of any stable form of government. House Tyrell. This is a complex case. Oh, you can smell the shit from five miles away. House Tyrell is contrasted with House Lannister and at the same time has many similarities with it. Yes, all Lannisters are lions. And when a Tyrell farts, it smells like a rose. The Tyrells are shown as the second richest house in Westeros, which also possesses a large army. In this case, we will approach it by the method of exclusion. There are no elements of a perfect state here, so we will exclude the monarchy or the aristocracy. House Tyrell shows no interest in military valor, honor, and things of that nature. That is, it is not democratic, and none of the representatives have tyrannical tendencies. Oligarchy. House Tully. Caitlin Stark comes from the Tully family. The head of the house is her brother, Edmia Tully, who is perhaps the weakest representative of the great houses. Though Tommen certainly makes serious competition to him. A strong character of the house Tully is Brynden Tully, known as the Blackfish. Summing up the two representatives of the family, it is possible to characterize this house as a weak democracy. House Frey is headed by old Walder Frey. It is unlikely that this house would even be a part of story if it were not for its disposition. Frey is portrayed as a suspicious, dishonest and ungracious ruler. One might characterize it as a tyranny, but a weak one. Expect nothing of Walder Frey and you'll never be surprised. House Bolton. Don't think there can be any doubt. Tyranny. And if Roos Bolton is still trying to tame his temper and think strategically, Ramsay is a tyrant in the most rigid form. Martels. I will be your champion. We are introduced to House Martell before King Joffrey and Marguerite Tyrell's wedding. Oberyn Martell has come to King's Landing to avenge the death of his sister, Elia. The head of the house is his brother, Doran Martell who aspires to be a wise ruler, but comes across as a cautious, even cowardly ruler, disliked by his subjects. Elaria Sand, along with Oberyn's daughters, the Sand Snakes, kill Doran and his son. It is difficult to give any definite characterization of Doran's rule. It is some kind of failed monarchy. As for Oberyn, Elaria and the Sand Snakes, it is certainly a democracy. Were introduced to House Tarly at the very beginning of the series. What in seven hours is that? Tell them your name. Samuel Tarly of Hornhill. Sam is an educated, perceptive character on the one hand and a comic on the other. He immediately became one of the fans' favorites. Because I'm fat? No. But I like girls just as much as you do. They might not like me as much. 
However, we don't meet the main representatives of the house until season 6, and it is a classic democracy. At the end though, Sam shows inclinations toward democracy. We meet representatives of House Mormont also at the very beginning of the series. Gerald Marmont is the Lord Commander of the Black Castle of the Night's Watch. His son Jorah Marmont is on the other side of the world and helping Daenerys Targaryen arrive in Westeros and take the Iron Throne. However, we do not meet the ruler of the House Marmont until the end of the series. We are not a large house, we are a proud one. And every man from Bear Island fights for the strength of ten mainlanders. If they are half as ferocious as their lady, the Boltons are doomed. Liana Marmont is presented as a wise ruler who does not jump to conclusions or make promises she cannot keep. That's a monarchy. House Targaryen The plot of the series revolves around the history of this house. From time to time we hear stories about the Mad King who ruled before Robert Baratheon, who was killed by Jaime Lannister. When the people rose and revolted against him, your father set their towns and castles aflame. He murdered sons in front of their fathers. He burned men alive with wildfire and laughed as they screamed. Another Targaryen turns out to be Maester Aemon of Castle Black. But the main characters are young members of the family. The brother and sister fight themselves at the age of the world trying to restore their house to its former glory and return to Westeros and once again rule the Seven Kingdoms. Viserys is presented as an obsessive madman who will stop at nothing to take the Iron Throne, but turns out to be a hysterical, weak and comic character. Daenerys appears far more measured and wise, but we see occasional displays of her fierce character. Lord Varys says an interesting line in the last season. They say every time a Targaryen is born, the gods toss a coin and the world holds its breath. Tyranny What we see in the last episode as Westeros' final form of government can be characterized as aristocratic rule with a king who is only formerly one. Thus, Westeros arrives at Plato's ideal form of government. So, if the great philosopher had watched the series, he would have been pleased. Best season ever! <laughs> and certainly would have been pleased if you watched this video.